Hello, I'm Jeff Kersey, and in the last program, you saw me take this painting to the halfway stage. So now I'm going to carry on and take it right through to completion. It was important to give that last work a bit of drying time, so that as I add more detail now to the column, I'm not smudging the paint that I put on before. So I've got some more grey, cobalt blue and light red. I've now transferred to the number two brush to give me an even finer point, and it's just a case of building in some more detail there are some little squares around here as part of the carving. A little bit of softening in. Some more grey in the shadows here. And then I'm going to build more grey in across the steps, trying to leave just a little glimpse of light paper. Not quite white, it's still got that little tint on it. So just a little glimpse of that to catch the light. Okay, I'm going to mix some colour now for these plaques in the centre. Can't get too much detail onto those, you can't see the detail at this distance, but they're a sort of dark brown colour, almost a chocolatey brown. So I'm going to take some burnt sienna and cobalt blue. The cobalt blue just kills off the red in the burnt sienna and darkens it, and we'll put these little shapes in to represent these plaques. on these plaques, the tone is as important as the colour. Notice this is a darker tone than most of the other detail on the column. Gonna get the corners nice and fine. Filling this area in with this rich brown. Use a bit of that same rich brown to get more shadow into this side of the steps. Same with this side of the plinths. Just sharpening up some detail now. Now on those plaques, there are engravings, but you can't make them out at this distance. So I'm just going to try and suggest them with a slightly darker brown made from ultramarine and burnt sienna. And I'm just going to put a few marks in just to suggest that it's not just a flat piece of metal. We're always, in a lot of cases, just going for suggestion rather than being too literal. Now, while I've got that rich dark brown mixture made from ultramarine and burnt sienna, that's the ideal colour for the lions. So we'll just start to suggest those. Having masked them out, I'm going to try and leave the tiniest little thin line of white dry paper catching the light to help define the shape of the lion. And look how these are a stronger tone than the background, so it really brings them forward. Because the backs of them are curved, I'm going to take a number two brush that's got clean water on it. It's just damp, not wet through, and soften that dark into the lighter edge before carrying on bringing that right down to meet the plinth. And where it meets the plinth, I'm trying to just leave a tiny little bit of white paper again to catch the light. And there's the feet from the one behind it. Just suggested, it's only a glimpse of that one. So I can now carry on the same color and the same method for the other lions. Try and still all the time on these to leave that little glimpse of white paper so that they catch the light. And again, as I work over the back of the lion, instead of give, getting a hard edge where it meets the white paper, I've got the number two brush again that is just damp with clean water. And I'm just softening that colour in before we give it a bit of drying time. So the previous stage has dried and I'm just going to 
put that London bus in. That's a good addition to the picture, but it's given me an opportunity to introduce a fresh colour. And I've got a little bit of cadmium red, which I'm going to tone down by adding a little touch of cobalt blue to it. And then very carefully, with a number two brush, I'm putting that in. Again, leaving maybe a little glimpse of white to look like the light's catching the roof. Leaves little spaces for the windows, which will need some grey adding to them once the red has dried. And that's all I can do for the bus now until the red has dried and we can put some windows in. But while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to get some more of the dark brown and do a bit more work on the plinth. Burnt sienna and ultramarine blue again. And just behind the right hand lion there, and up to the left hand one, we'll put a nice bit of rich dark in to really bring it forward, bringing it right down behind the masked out figures. I'm going to get a clean brush and just fade that down behind the figures. And that really sharpens up the light on the step there as well. Maybe a touch of dark across there with the very tip of the brush to darken this ridge here slightly. And now we can go back to the bus. I've got some grey, some cobalt blue and light red. I'm just going to put a bit of tone into these windows. I'm going to get a bit of red without the blue added to it to add just a little highlight across the top, slightly brighter in colour. And then I've got some of that rich dark brown again, the burnt sienna and ultramarine. And there are some little steel columns right away around the front of the structure. I'm putting these in very carefully. with a number two brush. them a little more frequent in one or two places. And while I've been doing that, the bus has dried and I can just get a bit more of the grey, cobalt blue and light red. Put a little hint of detail. Maybe a few people sat on the bus. Just little suggestions of detail through the windows. This number two brush with the really fine point. It's now time to get a bit of colour onto the foreground. So, so that it looks like it's reflecting some of the colour from the sky and I can get some reflections on the wet pavement. I'm going to start with the same glow that I put in the sky. That's Naples yellow with a hint of rose madder. And then I've got some more of the cobalt blue with a hint of rose madder that was also in the sky. And I'm going to start by just wetting the pavement area, avoiding that shape for that little fountain to the left, and just bringing down clean water before I introduce the pinky colour. And I'm bringing that pinky colour, the mixture of rose madder and Naples yellow, right down to the foreground before at the very front brushing in a bit of the cobalt blue. And that's your preliminary coat. That's got to have some suggestions of reflections once it's dried. So I need to leave that now to dry. 